going on here, Keith? Are you doing a video? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I'm going to do this right. You're going to do it right. Yeah. Well, there's this man. We can't survive without this bloke. Surfing Ninja. So now I've got the cover up, I'm able to grind and repair the bottom half of the hole. The, uh, the problem's been the water's been pouring through it and uh, I haven't ever been able to get a dry surface, especially after a month of fucking rain. Um, but I'm grounded back, I'm gonna now join this slot up in here. And you can see running down the center here of the hole. I've ground all that back, I've joined it with some timber ladders to, uh, to sort of secure the integrity of the hole, make sure it's all level square you can see how ground all that back I'll give that a good wipe with acetone clean it up just before I glass it gonna finally be one piece again after six months I've been in two pieces I'm waiting to uh, to get put back together So I'm about nine hours into uh, glassing the hole back together. We've uh, basically been stitching it together. And, oh, that's better. Um, glassing the, the, the slot that I basically cut in half about six months ago. Finally, now I'm under cover. I can uh, get it all glassed up and get this thing uh, you know, back together so we can repair the gel coat on the surface to pull the mold off. So back to it. You can see the slot running down here, so once I fix that, I can then put the uh, the gel coat in the top. Actually, we're going to fill the hole. And... So we've done about uh, eight layers here of glass. Um, probably going to come back in a day or so and get some uh, good quality roving on top. But I've done all the way along the bottom. You can see the repair all the way through. So it's going to make it nice and strong. A couple of days should be able to walk on the on the mould again and uh, be able to start filling in that slot with some really solid glass. So I'm here again under the belly of the beast and uh, yeah, getting a bit uh, over being under it, want to be on top of it, making it. But uh, after six months of sitting here, I'm finally, uh, we've glassed the entire two holes back together. You can see this uh, slot along the top here. Uh, you can see my aqua props are still here. But the idea is that uh, when I put it back together here, I bolted it together with these bits of timber, which I'll show you in a moment. But these bolts here, uh, I haven't been undone for about six months while it's been sat together while I've been glassing together so we're now ready to bang them in. The reality is you've never got enough coach bolts. I have thousands of them. Doesn't matter how many I buy, I need to go and buy more. It's just... Okay, so we've started to fill a slot here with uh, top glass. All the way along the hole. Um, Basically, we've got about 40 foot of, of uh, gap to fill with glass underneath. We're going to fill this, then we're going to grind it back. 
um, and then fair our new gel coating. So hopefully giving it plenty of strength. Up, but builders of, around that are watching me here are probably cringing when they're seeing me damaging this mold like this. But it was sort of necessary, and now I'm going to have a hell of a lot of polishing to uh, to get it back to normal. But you know, it's it's all good work, and it's really not that hard to restore a mold once you get it back together. Okay, so after uh, glassing underneath uh, with like 150 mil either side of this slot, I've decided to uh, I've just pushed some a heap of chop matting down into what little slot there was. And uh, make like a new shape, and then I'm going to come back and grind that out into a V, and I can do the gel coat repair down the centre here where the tread pattern is. I intend to do a, uh, a raised tread pattern because it's not exactly down the centre line, it's the bracing underneath. and then I'm going to spray it and, uh, and hopefully be able to clear it back around about sort of 20 centimetres and the nice thing about that is the nice level surface where it otherwise wasn't perfect and uh, hopefully we'll end up with a better result. So. So here we've sprayed the repair, got nice and level, and uh, hopefully be able to polish it out in a minute, and up the front, so that we're all, all sprayed, should be able to fair that back, right back, and around about two feet I'll fair that, to get it as level as possible. see it. You can see that, that's where the join was. All the way along there, so by turning it back, we can get it so that it appears virtually level for you. Looks fantastic. We're going to um, do a nice spray job up on this uh, engine bay mould and, uh, and come back later on and uh, laminate it up. So here we go.
just been uh, out for the afternoon. I thought I'll let the uh, let the gel coat settle and uh, and set, and uh, just come back to do a little spot test about three or four hours afterwards. And uh, perfect. So my new gel coating machine, uh, thanks to all of you, is uh, is incredible, and I'm so stoked. With it. And this is uh, yeah, so this is basically our engine bay. We've got uh, two of these to make. So one area you can really have to watch is uh, sharp corners like this when you laminate them. See this uh, this spot here? Um, I find it really uh, uh, good sort of practice to fill it with a Q-cell mixture, just polyester resin and some Q-cell, and you put in a fillet there, that gives the rise a little bit of a ramp and you don't end up with air bubbles in it. So you can see why I've done it. Um, the last one I made, I didn't quite get the, the fillet uh, into it, so now I've got a gel coat repair to do just on the edges. So those sorts of things are little tips that really make a big difference, and that that'll just be a you know 100 mils of polyester resin with uh, a little bit of Q cells mixed in it, and uh, you end up with other than this sort of little step, you end up with a little ramp, and uh, very easy to get the air bubbles out of when you're laminating. So that's tip for our laminating session on uh, on the engine bay. Wow, big job. We put a tie layer on yesterday, a 300 grand tie layer, uh, which tied the gel coat to the, to the mould, and then I put on another three layers of 450 CSM, uh, uh, basically chop strand matting onto this. So we're now at uh, uh, around about 1500 CSM, which is uh, uh, 1500 1.5 kilos per square metre, which is uh, you know pretty, really reasonable weight. So. What I've done too is I've uh, partly demolded it. Uh, it. It actually had sort of nominal release anyway, but um, I've added a couple of little rope loops in here, which I'll hopefully, which with it already sort of being pre-released off the mold, given the molds are so uh, so well polished up and well released, um, they should allow me to sort of lift it with a with a jack strap or some sort of a, even my crane at, at very worst, as I'll get my crane outside onto it. So hopefully we'll be able to release this baby tomorrow and uh, should be nice and, and still green and uh, still hold the shape well but then I'll be able to move on to making the second one. So. And I've come up with this uh, jury rig solution with an engine lifter uh, that I got from the mechanic next door, from Neil and, uh, and Stevie. And uh, hopefully that's going to be just enough to lift it up off the, off the mould. So you can see that I've got it straightened up here. Okay, here we go, Neil. Oh, fuck. Oh!
bit of uh, not their few bathroom modules. We've got engine bays made that we'll show you in this episode. We've got a stack of stuff made, and uh, and we're now at the around about fourth layer of our, uh, our hull. So we're moving along and, and moving along quite fast. But you know things don't move that quickly on the mould. Uh, it has been coined that. Uh, that there isn't a time-lapse camera slow enough to uh, to record this build, but uh, you know here in the war room I call it, where we where we cut our cloth, where I'm uh, studying my plans. You know th this is the the nuts and bolts of the of the boat build. I've got all, all my specs and all my layouts here done uh, by our yacht designers. Um, things could get pretty technical from here on in, so I hope I can keep your attention. But uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of hard graft to come. We've got tons of time lapse. You can see a few of the other time lapses there. So if you're interested in any more of this, and uh, you know, subscribing down here, and uh, you know, click on the notifications up there, and you'll get told when I put up a new video. And uh, and I hope you can join me on Life on the Mile.